Hello everyone, it's Jackie M again, and I'm doing the second in my series of uh, hangouts regarding Malaysian flavors. If you missed the first one last week, which was very popular, apparently, uh, we were we are doing with this particular series uh, what's called uh, essentially I'm turning things around a little bit instead of trying to teach you how to cook Malaysian dishes from scratch. I'm just teaching you Malaysian ingredients and showing you how you can infuse your everyday cooking uh, and incorporate these flavors into your everyday meals. I've got here with me pink eyebrows, uh, Shay again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thanks for coming along today on short notice. It was very fun last time. Oh, good, 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 liar. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got April uh, joining us, but I don't have video for April. And just a little bit of housekeeping, everyone. Um, I know that people occasionally complain about broadcast uh, audio quality and that sort of stuff. We are kind of limited in terms of what we can do. I've got a fantastic microphone that's supplied by Rode Mic, so look, look them up, R-O-D-E microphones. But uh, having said that, it's uh, an overhead mic and we're sharing it between me and Shay, so if we move out of the way a little bit, you're going to find that it fades in and out, so bear with us. But what I'm showing you today is something called Kaya. Now, I've shown how to make Kaya in a previous broadcast uh, uh, to do with my Malaysian uh, cookbook, Street Food at Home. If you want to uh, just quickly pull up the book, the URL is just on the screen, trulymalaysian.com, and there you go. Um, but it's got 20 of my uh, most popular recipes, and also you can find that recipe in my iPad app as well. If you search for Truly Malaysian in the App Store, you'll be able to download the app. It's only $1.99. It's got some fantastic articles, if I may say so myself. Fantastic videos of yours truly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's an Apple person. She knows all about that. But Kaya essentially is what my uh, my good friend and publisher JJ. She's a little bit. She's a food blogger and all that. She's a little bit more elevated than I am in terms of her point of reference. So she refers to Kaya being an American uh, who is very into food. She refers to it as something called uh, uh, Malaysian dolce de leche. Do you know what dolce de leche is? Yes, I do. Yes. Oh, well, there you go. See, I didn't know, but apparently it's something caramelly. I thought but, it was from a fruit. When oh, <laughs> okay, forget what. Just ignore that last bit there. But now that you say it, it does taste, it does taste very similar to I never can say it properly. Dolce de leche. Dolce de leche, yeah, that's right. Yeah, apparently it's condensed like, yeah, condensed milk, caramelized condensed yeah. milk, essentially, is yeah. what it is. But this is Kaya, and I do make my own, but if you, uh, the, the one thing about it is fairly straightforward to make, but it's fairly time, uh, late, uh, time intensive as well. It takes several hours steaming or cooking it over a double boiler, and then you've got to let it cool down and all that. But if you're buying, the, buying it, this particular product, there's a Malaysian brand, it's called Dolly, spelled D-O-L-L-E, look it up at your stores, I think you can actually get it internationally, otherwise just pop me an email and I'll tell you where to buy it. The great thing about the Dolly brand is that it doesn't contain any preservatives. Mm -hmm. And the other thing about Kaya is, now Dolly actually produces two different uh, uh, variations to uh, this coconut jam. And you'll notice if you can see it on screen, uh, one's green and one's brown. The brown one is just coconut jam, that's the traditional version. The green one has pandan in it. Okay, the version that I make actually does contain and pandan. Where is it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a herb sort of thing. Close enough, close enough. Okay, you're getting there one day. Mr. Bergen, good to have you join us. Cheers, hello. Cheers, hey, all the way from Sydney, Australia. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we're just going through the two different types of kaya. Now, okay. uh, this is a pandan kaya, which has the green uh, uh, kind of like hue to it, and that's caused by the pandan leaf, which is a flavoring herb that we use in a lot of Malaysian cooking, both sweet and savory. And when yeah. people ask me what pandan does, essentially I tend to try and explain it as um, uh, Malaysian vanilla, really, because it's fairly subtle in its flavoring, and you yeah. know you can skip it, but it does give it a nice overturn, underturn. Like, it does taste yeah. great. Uh -huh. Yeah, 
Yeah, okay. But I'm just um, showing I'm people... A, I'm allowed... It's okay to drink while I'm watching, isn't it? Oh, that's all right. I'll let you off the hook. Okay. Just, uh, yeah, when you uh, start um, uh, babbling incoherently, I'll mute you or something, Ken. <laughs> Good to have you again, by the way. Ken's, uh, yeah. Ken's been to one of my master classes. I was just telling Shay off air about how I ran a series of cooking master classes last year, and you and James came along to one of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. He was going to come along tonight, but he's uh, had to. He's been held up by something else. So anyway, this will be recorded, won't it? So uh, yes, yes, absolutely. It will be recorded yeah. and uploaded to my YouTube channel. And uh, Ken actually used uh, Ken and uh, both you and James owned the rest uh, cafe, right? Uh, I, that was just me. Yeah, I used to. Own oh, just you. Okay, cool, cool. But they're working in like the consulting field now to do with the yeah. marketing and that sort of stuff, right? Yeah, and love watching like, um, smart online marketers too, who leverage, you know, their uh, their skills <laughs> like you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm a trailblazer. <laughs> That's okay, it. Now, yeah. now, okay, we're talking about Kaya, and I mentioned uh, before you join us that I've shown people how to make it, but if you want the recipe, and it really you need like maybe four ingredients, you need eggs, you need uh, coconut cream, you need sugar, lots of sugar, and yeah. pandan flavoring, essentially, with or without will be fine. If you use it without pandan flavoring, you'll get like, a brownish kind of product, okay, like yeah. this sugar version here, and then you would uh, blend it, and then steam it or cook it over a double boiler for several hours until it turns custardy and then what I do is use a stick blender and blend it so it turns into a creamy consistency but for, uh -huh. uh, for the sake of expediency like I said you can buy this fairly cheaply at the store and it's perfect and what I'm you pretty can sure use I've it for the, you know, I'm pretty sure I've had the green one it's thick, thick on toast is delicious that's right, that's right. You have to be pretty generous with it. I find the uh, Western palate tends to find it a little bit too sweet for some reason. I've had a lot of Western sweets and cakes. Sweet. I find Western food very, I mean, Western sweet very, very sweet. I don't find this particularly sweet. But when I sell this, it's when I'm more rich than sweet, it's quite rich. Yeah, not yeah. might be it. But in, in Malaysia, like Ken was saying, we do actually generally serve it uh, on toast. Um, but we don't usually use this kind of bread. But for mm -hmm. today's exercise, I'll show you this one. Okay, what we're going to do? We're going to try and do four different things with kaya. So you can, you know, pick up one of these off the shelves and then not have it sit in your cupboard for uh, eight months or whatever till it goes off. Okay. Can so you please many Asian grocery. You can in a lot of uh, um, uh, Malaysian, uh, well, Asian grocery stores, and you can. They're they're quite a generic product, so they're not too hard to uh -huh. find. But like I said, pop me an email or leave a comment if you're looking, uh, if if you're having trouble uh, finding it, and I'll tell you where you can get it. Right. Why did my yeah, video um, go off? Uh, the Oriental Supermarket in Randwick has has a fair good. That's oh, well, there you go. See, he knows more than I do. <laughs> okay, Cairo, good to have you join us. Yeah. Someone new. Cairo, yeah. right? Okay. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Anyway, okay, Kaya, we're going to make uh, your the traditional way we would serve it is with toast, and uh, I'm going to get. I've got an oven and grill up the back, so I'm gonna. Yeah, she'll be my assistant, and she's gonna take this I'll round take the back. Sure I don't burn it. Yeah. Okay, so I'll get her to take it round the back, and the other thing is what I serve it with at my store, at uh, at my weekend market is I actually serve it. Um, with roti, roti chanai, which is actually fairly unusual. Nobody, oh, growing yum. up in Malaysia, I never had kaya with roti chanai. I had it on toast, okay? But uh, because I was selling roti at the markets and was trying to find a way to use it effectively, a lot of uh, Aussies tend to find uh, having a curry dip with your roti early in the morning to be a little bit uh, uh, an acquired taste, but having it mm -hmm. sweet as a breakfast thing with kaya <coughs> to be quite agreeable to them. So it's one of my more popular dishes at my farmer's market that I trade at on the weekend. Just give me a second, I'm having trouble with this though. Let's try this one. And running. Now, the roti, uh, for some that actually is already pre cooked, okay? This is left over from my market yesterday. Uh -huh. But you can buy these frozen as well at the store and cook it up, okay? 
but I've got a pen here. I'm just going to reheat it over here. Um, just to, touching base with you guys. Uh, can you see me okay? Because I seem yeah. to be okay. My video right. is going all right. Because I seem to be yeah. fading in and out from my end. Yeah. Okay. Very clear. Gonna... The lighting is good. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay. Terrific. So I'm just going to reheat this roti so it just kind of like heats uh, fluffs back up a little bit. I'm just going to put a little bit of butter on it. And while I'm doing this, Shade is just, like I said, just toasting some bread so I can show you what we do traditionally in Malaysia, the kaya. So this is cooking. And the other thing we're going to make, which I'm really excited about, and I'll talk a little bit about this uh, some more, is to make a Malaysian uh, version of bread and butter pudding. And yeah, that sounds butter. wonderful. That sounds great. I think, yeah. You know, to be honest, uh, years and years ago, you're talking about 20 years ago now maybe, I, I actually bought a cookbook that did have a Malaysian bread and butter pudding in the recipe. And that completely, I, I kind of spaced off on that. And then mm -hmm. recently, I had this lady by the name of Shen Tan. She is uh, an ex-restaurateur from Singapore, and we were brainstorming when she was over here in Sydney uh, a couple of weeks ago about... Basically, uh, Southeast Asian fusion, you know, with uh, Western, Western, uh, Western food, and she suggested the bread and butter pudding. I thought, oh yeah, that's a great idea using kaya. So I have to thank Shen for bringing that back into the spotlight, and I is actually that, is that can also be done with the with leftover roti as well, or is that what you're doing it with leftover roti? I'm or doing, with I'm doing right leftover roti. And all I'm doing here is just uh, spreading it with kaya and serving it uh, uh -huh. as, as a roti with kaya. Uh, Excuse me, Eddie, my dinner too. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no problems. No problems. That's the beauty of these hangouts, the fact that you can do just about everything from the comfort of your home while we're doing this. And um, the other thing I want to show you, I've done this before, but I haven't for a long time now is to make uh, kaya puffs, okay? And when I made it, I actually used my own homemade uh, dough and rolled it out and that sort of stuff. But again, for expediency's sake, I'm going to actually use uh, pre-rolled puff pastry, and I'll show you when Che comes back as well how we tackle that. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you the bread and butter pudding. And I'm going to find me some gloves. Give me a second. And that's chiral, right? Chiral. Yes, sorry. Yes, how are you doing? Great, great. You're over in uh, Brunei, isn't it? Yep. Cool, cool. Never been there. I might go there one day. Sure, no problem. I've, I've never been to Borneo. I plan to go to uh, Sabah Sarawak in the uh, near future. So we are about a couple of hours from Sarawak. You can actually okay. drive down. Okay, sure. I've seen some video of uh, Brunei, and uh, it's not too, and it's very very similar to Malaysia, to be honest. But I'm told you guys speak Malay a little bit different. Yeah, more uh, Sabahans uh, speak close to Brunei and Malay. Oh, is that right? Okay, cool, cool, right. Mm. I'm told you guys sound more Indonesian than Malay. No, no. <laughs> Very big. More, we're more uh, Borneo. More what, sorry? Uh, we sound more Borneo. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Okay. How is it? Okay, cool. Right, I've got the toast here. It's a little bit light, but we are using a. <laughs> we've never, we've never used. I've got an oven, a dinky little oven that came with this place, and I, have, I haven't used it since I moved in six months ago. And okay, I've sliced up some bread here, and what we're going to do is actually let me just take some out because we might not need all of this. But I'm going to uh, tip in some coconut cream. Hopefully, this pours. Okay. Okay, this one's a little bit curdled because this is from uh, last, uh, the last time I used some. Do you want to just try and uh, get this out? 
And in the meantime, the, the Kaya chose what we would do to see what's there. What we do in Malaysia is have uh, butter that's sliced up fairly thick, okay? We're talking about like nearly one centimetre thick yeah, slices. Cool. So it's very healthy for you. <laughs> Not? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Okay. I'm just doing one piece of bread, so I'm not using too much. And as Ken mentioned, we use a fair amount of kaya over it, okay? And I'm just going to, instead of a <laughs> artery clogging, <laughs> the best. Okay, this looks a little bit sad, <laughs> but generally the toast, we would actually grill on live coals, okay? And the toast will be like striped uh, with the char uh, basically charred, and the heat from the bread will just melt the butter halfway. It's very, very nice, and you would have some soft boiled egg with that, and that makes a very typical Malaysian slash Singaporean breakfast. Okay, the other thing I did when I first came to Australia was I discovered, obviously we had peanut butter in Malaysia as well, but I discovered the joys of having kaya and peanut butter sandwich, okay? So, now, the reason, <laughs> it's kind of like an East meets West thing, so I'm just sticking to Okay, yeah, sure, sure. It might not be. Okay, so I'm just putting some peanut butter here. And now, now that Shay is out of sight, the reason I have her here along really is uh, she is kind of like my guinea pig sort of thing because she is like the uh, my contact to my demographic, which are mostly uh, <laughs> mostly people who aren't familiar with Malaysian food, and she totally completely represents <laughs> that particular demographic. Yeah, yeah. So she just makes the taste of it. That's right. There you go. So this is just what I used to pack for my uh, lunch at high school when I was attending school here in Australia. Now, and this is my roti. Okay, I don't know if you can see it. No. So yep. I'll just read it. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> okay. honey, honey here, but it is good, huh? Yeah. And this is how I serve this at my store in uh, at the markets on weekends. Now, to be fair, when I first started doing this, uh, well, not when I first, at some point when I used to flip my own roti at the markets, I used to uh, flip roti to a spread very thin onto a bench, and then I would dot it with kaya, and then I'll fold up the roti and then cook it. So the, layers, the kaya layer is actually uh, within the roti. But nowadays, since I stopped making my own roti and paid someone else to make it for me, I've bought them pre-made. So I just cook the roti separately and then spread it with kaya and fold it in half like this. Okay? And then I'll cut it. If you want to have a go at cutting it with four slices. And then serve it in a on a on a sewing plate, obviously. Now our one thing we're going to make now is the bread and butter pudding. I'm using coconut cream, okay? I've got it over here, and I'm just going to crack four eggs into this. While I'm making this, I need to point out, earlier this week, I actually filmed a TV cooking segment with a TV show called The Travel Bug. Have you ever seen it, Ken? No. Is it what, Australian, is it? Or what yes, it is Australian. It's on Channel 72, and this particular episode is going to air on Saturday, the 14th of December. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. You'll be you'll be sending us a Twitter reminder just before I hope. You bet, you bet, you bet. Channel seven two M, I believe, is on there. Oh uh -huh. my goodness, this is really embarrassing. Three thirty, four thirty. I'll I'll tweet about it. I'll I'll hit you over the head with reminders, Ken. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I've got coconut cream and I've got eggs in here, and I'm going to soak the bread. In here, and the reason we're using bread rolls for the record is uh, Shay and I. Uh, Shay is one of my crew members. Shay and I were doing a festival last Sunday, and the guy, the stall next to us, had a ton of bread rolls left over at the end of the day, and he threw them out, and we kind of scavenged them. 
<laughs> so there you go. I wasn't so useful with mine. You know, <laughs> then you are really. It's always the case, though. It seemed like a good idea yeah. at the time until you think, oh, what am I going to do with all these red rolls? But still, you know, we didn't want it to go to waste. It put them all into one big bag and, 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 and dump them. <laughs> We're very sad. <laughs> We're dumpster, <laughs> We're dumpster <laughs> divers. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Okay, so I soak these bread in uh, in the coconut slash egg mixture, and we're going to. And I've got a baby tray, beautifully lined. Okay, that yeah. I'm just putting the bread on, and I'm going to drizzle this with kaya. Okay, when I say drizzle, I'm really going to go crazy with it. Okay, <laughs> and I'm going to dot it. With some uh, saltatas over here as well, okay, and then just layer it again with more of that. And hopefully, I was hoping, you know what? I didn't think through this very carefully, but I should have done this first because this is going to take a while. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to go maybe crank up the heat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm just going to put more of this. Yeah, you do that. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Just sprinkle more of this. And I'm just going to just give it a quick uh, dusting of sugar as well. Okay, and off it goes. Fingers crossed it turns out. It's quite funny because, I, uh, like I mentioned, I did a cooking segment on the travel bug the other day and we went to Tinteria, which Ken would be very familiar with. It's a beautiful, yeah. beautiful Malaysian restaurant located in Darling Harbour here in Sydney. And of course, uh, best late plans and all that, I meant to pop in a day or two beforehand just to suss out the logistics and that sort of stuff, but the weather was so crap and I wasn't feeling that great, so I thought, no, it will be good. I've done this a million times. I showed up on the day made the bread and butter pudding and realized being a Malaysian slash Asian restaurant, they don't have an oven. Oh. Okay. <laughs> they had a steamer and thank goodness this wasn't mine. So we stuck it in the steamer and think, oh but I was all heat, isn't it? And half an hour later it was like a bloody mess. And thankfully my uh, associate JJ was very innovative. She ran around to the restaurant next door to Chinteria, a proper Western restaurant, and they very kindly let us use their oven. So the filming had to uh, just uh, grind to a halt while we took the pathetic tray off uh, bread and butter pudding next door. And it turned out beautifully. I posted a picture of it on, uh, on the event here, and that's what we came out with. But if anyone uh, has never caught the travel bug, it's going to air internationally as well, so I'm very excited about it. Uh, if you look up, they do actually have a Google Plus page. They also have a Facebook page. But look them up, the travel bug is a very, very high quality production. I'm, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, uh, you know, I was quite surprised, but, you know, no, but they've got a fantastic production team and they've been all over the world. It's, uh, they've done 44 episodes. This is season four. So check out the Travel Bug and certainly check out the Dolly products that we're using. Um, and I'm going to get Shay back uh, in a minute and we're going to attempt to make the curry puffs as well and uh, show you what how that will turn out. But in the meantime, Carol, do you want to introduce yourself to everyone? Because I know Ken in real life, but uh, I've only interacted with you through your Google Plus post. But you're involved in food as well, is that correct? Uh, yeah, um, I own a couple of restaurants, okay. um, mostly Western. And uh, currently, I mostly work in my own test kitchen. Sure, so, sure. So most of the posts that you see is the crappy food that I really try to perfect before it goes into the restaurants. Okay, fantastic. They look great though. Yeah, uh, I have to eat them. <laughs> oh. Not so good sometimes. <laughs> and how long have you run the restaurants for? Um, 20 over years? 20 over years. Okay, wow, my goodness, cool. And I want to mention to everyone who's tuning in and also everyone who catches it after the broadcast, which is like 
99.9% of my viewers that we are actually offering some free giveaways. So if you get in touch with me by commenting on the Google Plus post about uh, what your favorite uh, dish is, is non-Malaysian dish because like I said, the whole point of this new series of uh, Hangouts is essentially us experimenting with Malaysian flavors uh, you know, in your everyday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, if you say, oh, you know, my favorite dish is a uh, hot dog or lasagna or something like that, it'll kind of like get my brain processes working a little bit about how we can Malaysianize it. So, sort of so post a comment there. If you're based here in Australia, I can send you some foodstuffs, I can send you some Dolly products. But if you are based overseas because of shipping costs, I can send you a link, a, a free code uh, to download my truly Malaysian iPad app or my uh, even my cookbook, the e-version of my cookbook as well. So uh, if you can tell everyone to comment on this post or comment within the YouTube uh, YouTube link, essentially, I will uh, I will uh, pick three winners and send some stuff out to them. So spread the word. Very excited about that. But yeah, Shay, if you want to pull out the the puff pastry. And uh, we're going to bake this as well. You can also deep fry this. If you were deep frying, I prefer using the spiral uh, puff, uh, spiral pastry that I would make from scratch and roll from scratch. But if you're using puff pastry, it's best to just bake it. So essentially, you're going to be making one sheet. Yep, just one sheet should be fine. You're, you're basically making a sweet paste, uh, pastry that's filled with kaya. I'm just going to cut it into nine even squares. Now, ideally, what you would want to do is actually just uh, chill this or freeze this a little bit so it's easy to handle, but we didn't have time for that tonight. So, um, do we have a teaspoon if you want to just uh, up down the okay, I've got a fairly big spoon, so it may get a little. If you, if you see higher, it's a, it should be quite a thick um, mixture. Okay, like I said, some people find it extremely sweet, so go a little bit easy on it. But you want to just fold it into a triangle and just pinch the sides a little bit. We don't want to get too fancy and pleated, so just pinch the edges. Yeah, and then you can just uh, score the edges with a fork, or really just put it in like that. And just brush it with a little bit of egg wash. Do you have egg wash? We can eat it with the few eggs over there. Okay. And then we're going to bake it for probably about 20 minutes or so. And if Shay's making a complete mess here. I'm <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Novice. <laughs> just basically try and get it in the middle. Like I said, it would be easier to handle if you had actually uh, frozen it a little bit. But we didn't have time for that. And... I mentioned, if you're just joining us, that Kaya, uh, this particular brand, Dolly, produces two versions, and they're both very nice. The green one is uh, has got pandan in it, and the brown one doesn't. Pandan just gives it that green hue because pandan is a... She's frozen. Hello, what happened to you? Hello. Jackie. We just talk amongst ourselves. 